Good evening. I'm Brian Reagan, speaking to you in a somber and dry tone because it's nighttime mm -hmm. when you're watching this. Mm. But is it though? Yes, any time after six is technically night. This is true. As long as they're watching it when we upload it. As long as they're watching it when it first posts. Yes. Yes. Because we will upload it in the daytime, yes. probably. More than likely. More than likely. But uh, good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And uh, we welcome you to our Twilight Talks. And tonight we are in Psalm 35, verses 1 through 16. Tyler. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek who after my life. Let them be turned back and confounded who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hide their net or hid their net from me or for me. Without cause they dug a pit for my life. Let ruin come on them unawares and let the net that, hid, that they hid ensnare them. Let them fall in it to their ruin. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, exalting in his deliverance. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you? You deliver the weak from those too strong for them, the weak and needy from those who despoil them. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me about things I do not know. They are paying me evil for good. My soul is forlorn. But as for me, when they were, they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my bosom, as though I was grieved for a friend or a brother. I went about as one who laments for a mother, bowed down in the morning. But at my stumbling they gathered in glee, they gathered together against me. Ruffians whom I did not know tore at me without ceasing. They imp impishly mocked impiously. impiously mocked more and more, gnashing at me with their teeth. Alright. So, um this is when we talk about letting the Lord fight your battles, this is very much uh, Romans twelve. You know, do not repay evil for evil, but rather repay evil with good. Why? Because the Lord will avenge. The Lord is the one who takes the vengeance for you. Um, some people go, Jesus says we're just supposed to bless. I get that. I get that. And I'm not disagreeing with Jesus in what I'm going to tell you. Because what I'm going to tell you is... This right here, when you heap coals on people's head by doing good to them when they do evil to you, you can say this prayer of David because what's your desire? That God would destroy them? No, that they'd knock it off. That they'd knock it off. You know? But listen to what David starts off with. Verses 1 through 3. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Father, you take up my defense. Not me. You do it. Fight them when they're close to me and fight them when they're a long ways off still. That's the point of spear and javelin. Hit them before they even get close. Oh, no, brother. I want to... Look, the time to take out an army that's coming at you is before they ever get there. That's when you take them out. I mean, you know, if... Back in World War II, if the Germans would have had any sense, they wouldn't have wasted their time on uh, supply ships. They would have put their time into finding out when the troop transports were going to go. And, uh, you know, they just sunk those. You know, we talked about this before. You know, had Hitler wiped out the British at Dunkirk, that would have been the end of World War II for Britain. 300,000. 300,000. That's like wiping out a third of our standing U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. Or wiping out the Marine Corps twice. You know? That's, that's huge. That's huge. So fight them when they're close. Fight them when they're a long ways off. Let them be put to shame. Let their way be dark and slippery. Don't make their path easy to do me wrong. See, I think sometimes, Tyler, when people read this, they're like, 
I'm praying for God to kill him. I can't pray that. Really? That's what you read? David's saying, you, you take them out for me, God. Hit them when they're far. Hit them when they're near. Make their path as difficult as possible to attack me. And every snare and every trap they ever laid for me, if they're going to leave it down, let them be ensnared by their own trap. But keep me out of it. I don't want to pray that for them. Then fine. Switch your prayer and say, Dear God, let me fall into all their traps so that they won't be hurt by their own traps and all of their traps will be sprung by me and I'll be destroyed. Well, I don't want to pray that either, brother. You have to pray for the traps to be removed somehow. Dear God, if they will not repent, let their own trap be sprung on them. Because why? It's going to be sprung on somebody. And and if, they, if someone sets a trap for Tyler and they can't get Tyler and they set a trap for me and they can't get me, you do realize they're going to set a trap for someone else at some future point. Mm -hmm. So either the trap has to be got rid of or they need to fall into their own trap so that they realize what? They need to quit setting traps. I hate traps. I hate traps. I don't, I don't even like traps for hunting or catching. I, no, I don't like it. If you ever see me get to a point where I have to use a trap for, for an animal or anything else, it means I've exhausted everything else to try and, and find a way to deal with that animal. I do not like traps. I just, I don't believe in them. I don't like them. I hate using them. I just, I don't. And so what if you got something you're trying to catch so you can relocate it to the wild? It doesn't change the fact I still don't like using the trap. I prefer what? The situation had never been there. Because with a trap, even a well-designed, humane, everything is as safe as safe can be, there is still the potential that this thing will go bad. And, and someone or something will get hurt by that trap. I don't, I just, I hate traps, man. And, uh, you know, and so verse nine and 10, he moves into a place of praise. You took care of me. I praise you. You should praise God, whether he takes care of you or not. You ever notice people say all kinds of spiritual sounding stuff, but none of it has any real biblical basis. Yes. And then they go, brother, I just don't know why I don't get from God what I need. Well, quit saying what sounds spiritual to your flesh and start getting into the word of God and let the word of God direct your spirit and let your spirit inform your soul and let what's in your soul from your spirit, let that be what comes out in your flesh. Instead of your flesh saying, oh, this sounds spiritual. I think that's what I'll put into my soul. No. Who had who had who had these words recorded? If it was Psalms, it would have been David when someone wrote them. Okay, a lot of them would have been David, but who had it recorded, Tyler? For us to have it now, three thousand years later. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. God obviously is the one who said, "My name is God. I approve of this message." You say, but we live under the new covenant built under better promises. Yep. So if that's what God was willing to do for his people back then, surely he's able to do at least that much or better for us now. Oh, you can't say that. I just yeah, did. Yeah. I just did. Not because Brian says so, but because who says so? God says so. God says so. Because he says so in the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. You say, you've been on that book of Hebrews, I know. The more time I spend with it, the more I realize, yeah, just wow. <laughs> but now look at verse 11 through 14, and I want you to see this. When the people who wanted to do ill to David, when they fell on hard times, David said, when they're sick, I wear sackcloth. When they're afflicted, I fast. I pray with my head bowed as though I grieve for a friend. 
or a brother or a mother. Simple fact is, who was the main guy that this psalm was probably written about, Tyler? Hmm. Would it be Absalom? Could be Absalom. Or Saul. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is really kind of more of a a Saul one. Because Saul was treated by David like a father and a brother and a friend. He wouldn't let his armies kill Saul when they had the chance. He wouldn't let his armies engage Saul's armies. Because he says, we're all the same, we're all the same side. We don't want to fight with these guys. There are family. And even though Saul and all his army was trying to kill David and his men, David, David didn't rejoice when bad things happened to him. That's tough. The people who hate your guts when something bad happens to them, to bow your head in prayer and ask God's blessing on them in their time of trial. Because why? Some of them, they'll never know. And when they get feeling better, sometimes, guess what? When they hear that you stumble, they'll throw a party. Let the Lord fight your fights. Pray for them. Pray for your enemies. Like they're your brothers, your sisters, your mothers, your fathers, because some of them are literally and spiritually, physically and spiritually. And uh, it's okay to ask God, make their way as hard as possible until they repent so that they can, that they stop hurting me, God, please. It's okay. You're not asking bad on them. Well, you said let their trap happen to them. Well, trap has to be sprung somewhere. Unless they disassemble it. I don't want me hurt. I don't want someone else hurt in it. And if they said it, if they aren't going to disassemble it, let them fall into their own trap. But preferably what? Take you out of your trap. Quit setting traps for people. <clears throat> and some of you, you remember who Prince Charles' first wife was, Tyler? You ever heard of her? Yeah, Princess Diana. Princess Diana. Princess Diana had a charity that she was very big with. It was called, you know, I don't I remember the exact name of it, but it was basically like, you know, disable all of the landmines that you've placed everywhere in the world. That's kind of how I look at these traps. Do you realize there's still landmines in Europe and throughout all of the Pacific put in there by the Germans and the Japanese? Most of them have finally decayed enough where they're not a threat. But you know what? You can never take the chance. You can never take the chance because on the off chance, it still works. That trap can kill someone later on. Disassemble those traps. And the people who set the traps should be the ones who disassemble them. So, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. You got anything you want to add? No, sir. Then say good night. Good night.